All right. Hi, everybody. Well, as I said, now you know my name and where I'm from and how long I've been playing bridge. And so I'd like to just get a little taste of who you all are. I see some names in the chat. Um, if you just say hi, if you haven't already, and where you're from. And also, I'd be curious to know how many of you have had any prior exposure to bridge? Just type, you know, like yes or no in the chat. That would be great. I see people coming from New York, Canada, and UK. Some people played bridge a long time ago. Peggy, okay. And Linda, yes, through your parents. A lot of people I know learned from their parents. And Ken, an absolute beginner, that is absolutely fine. Because believe me, we are starting from the beginning. And those of you who have learned a call, I teach um, standard American slash two over one. So this might be a little different in terms of the bidding, but we're not even going to touch bidding for quite some time. As I said, this we're going to start from the ground up so we can build a solid foundation. Okay, great. People looks like some people have a little taste of bridge, it's maybe a strong bridge family or not, and some people complete beginners. This is going to be fun. All right. Are you ready to get started? Here's my introduction to bridge. So first off, bridge is a card game and you play with a partner against another partnership. There are always exactly four players at every bridge table. And we identify the players by the quote unquote direction in which they sit north, south, east, west. This does not necessarily correspond to the actual geographic position at the table, but north and south are partners and east and west are partners. And so when we talk about the game, we'll say, okay, well, north bid this or west played this card. And that's sort of standard bridge talk. And it's, it's a card game. It's played with a deck of 52 cards, no jokers. And there are four suits, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Each suit has 13 cards, 13 times four is 52. That's kind of the extent of the math abilities that you need. People think, oh, you have to be good in math to be good in bridge. You don't, you have to be able to like count to 13 and add to 40 and that's about it. So the, the ace, king, queen, and jack are called face cards because they have, well, the ace doesn't have a face, but they're not numbers, they're face cards. And these face cards plus the 10 are called honors because they were the highest cards. Then the other cards, the two through the nine are called spot cards. So each player is dealt 13 cards and that's known as a hand, a bridge hand. How do you play a hand? Each card, each player will place a card face up on the table. One, two, three, four, you go clockwise. And every four cards played in this manner is called a trick. Since every player has 13 cards, there are 13 tricks in every hand of bridge. And here we go, the object of the game. Do you remember, did you, did you play like the Parker Brothers games, the board games when you were a kid and it always said, you know, for ages six and up, two to four players, the object of the game. This is like a key thing to keep in mind as you're learning all the other stuff about bridge. The object of the game is for you and your partner as a team to take as many tricks as possible with the maximum being 13. So how do you win a trick? Well, the first player chooses a card from their hand and puts it face up on the table. This is called the opening lead. And how we pick which player does that, we figure that out later. Then you go clockwise around the table and you choose a card from your own hand and put it face up. And the first cardinal rule of bridge is that you must follow suit. So if the first card placed on the table is a club, you have to play a club if you have a club in your hand. The highest card on the, the table of, the, of all the four cards played wins the trick. 
And this person is now what we call on lead and plays the next card for the next trick. So here's an example. So the opening lead, the first person played the nine of clubs. So you have to follow suit. So then going clockwise, this person would play the 10 and then the ace and then the three and the ace. Oh yes, the ace is high. I know in some card games, the ace is low, ace is high. The ace, the highest card in the suit will win the trick. A question about, will we get these notes? Um, I probably could share the notes, but you can definitely replay this. Uh, as much as you want, anytime you want. Now, if the nine of clubs was the first card led, then we have the 10 of clubs, the ace of hearts, and the three of clubs. Which card do you think will win this trick? That's right, the 10 of clubs. Like the ace is high, but you have to follow suit. It's the highest card in the suit that was led, which is clubs. So what happens if you don't have a card in the suit led? Then you have to play a different card. You play something else. And this is generally known as a discard. And deciding what to discard is actually, it can get pretty complicated and that's part of the strategy down the road. I mean, the short answer is you want to discard something that you don't think is likely to produce a trick in the future. All right. Want to play some cards? Let's look at some examples. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can share my screen. Where is it? Can you all see this? Okay, that's good. Okay, so this is, we're not gonna play with a full deck. We're not playing with a full deck in this house at, for a little bit. So just easiest example, you can see all four cards, all four hands. The goal is to win one trick. And the highlighted box here is south. So we start with south. We play the ace. And we also have to play our partner's cards, which is north here. And the ace is high. So the ace wins the trick. Now here's another example. Now this time north is highlighted. So we're going to start with north. And they play the five. And even though it's just the lowly five, the five is the highest card, so that will win the trick. Okay, now look at this example. We'll start with south. And here again, the nine is high, but it's not a heart. So the six of hearts wins the trick. Okay, now we have to win two tricks. And we'll start with North. We can see all the cards. We can see that everybody's got diamonds and that we have the two highest diamonds. That's nice. So this is kind of easy, right? We just play the diamonds and we win. Okay, now here, we're going to start in south, but we have to make sure that we play them in the right order or that we don't, you know, we don't waste them. So here we got to play the nine and save the king. So the ace wins. The ace leads to the next trick. And you win with the king. Now here we have to win three tricks. 
and we're starting from south and everybody's got spades. So we can see that we have the top three spades. But again, you have to sort of make sure that you don't that you don't waste them. Like if you play the ace here, now you're going to be stuck, right? Because the queen will win. But now you'll lose to the four. So you have to make sure you play small under the king. And then lead up to the ace and the queen will win. Okay. You're probably thinking that's pretty basic, right? Are there any questions at this point? And if, if it's not clear, please let me know. And I'm happy to explain or go through something again. Okay, then here are some other examples. So our goal here is to win two tricks and we're starting from south. Does anyone have any thoughts? No idea why cards are being played, okay. So we have to win two tricks between north and south, and we're going to start from south. If we play the king, then east is going to win the ace. But we'll win the second trick. But if we start, as Ken suggests, with the lowly three, because we can see that we have, even though they're not face cards, we have the two high hearts. Right, Archie, the opponent has the ace of spades, so you, you have to stay away, don't play spades, you have to play hearts, because that's where you have your winners. Okay, what about this one? We just have to win one trick. Well, we have to cash our ace of diamonds right away because if we play the six, then the king will win over here and they'll play a spade. So then we will have lost both tricks. See, if we do it this way, now they'll play a six, and it's the only spade. So we'll never get our ace in this case. Sometimes you you do want to give up a trick, but not this time. Tom asks, why just one trick? Uh, that was the, the objective given by the, pro by the problem at hand. So see here on the right, it says target win four tricks. So here we have to win four tricks and North is highlighted in yellow. So we're gonna start with North. Can you count four winners? I see four high spades, but again, we have to play them in the right order. This concept is called playing the honors from the short side first, because we have four cards in the north and three cards in the south. So we have to cash south's winners first and then bridge up to north, that's why the card game is called Bridge. You know, I didn't know that until about a year ago. And now we can play the two winners from north's hand. If you don't do that, 
if you start with the ace, and you think, okay, well, now I'll take the jack, but now the suit is blocked. You can't get back to the eight, and your six of hearts is not a winner. So that's why we say honors from the short side first to prevent the suit from getting blocked, as we say. Okay, here again, it says the target is four tricks. Do you see four winners amongst these cards? And those of you who are watching via the replay also, before I start playing, stop and think, how would you play this, this, this hand, this set of cards? Yeah, I see people are seeing the, all the honors and diamonds. And we're starting from south because that's what's highlighted in yellow here. Right, Ken, we'll start by playing the four of diamonds and winning the jack. And then we have one diamond left in North's hand to bridge back to south and cash the other three winners. Now here we have to discard because North is out of diamonds. It doesn't really matter here which one we discard. And in fact, we're going to discard both of them. So there you go. Okay, and here's an interesting example. Again, we have to win four tricks and we start from south. It looks like we've got four winners right in our own hand. But we have to be careful to cash them in the right order. Which one should we start with and why? I see a suggestion for the jack. Yeah, Archie's got the right idea. We have to start with hearts. And this is called overtaking with the ace. And we can get back to the other heart winners with the spade. But you have to do that first, because if you first cash your ace, that's all very nice. But now when you play a heart, North has to win their ace of hearts because they don't have another heart. And now East and West have all the high cards in the other two suits. So that didn't work out very well. So the trick here is to see that you have to overtake one of your one of South's winners with the North and then bridge back to South with the Ace of Spades. Are there other questions before I continue? You sort of get the gist of how this works, right? Okay, the target is to win four tricks. Well, all we have is diamonds. Now, how many diamonds do we have? 
we have four in the north and four in the south, a total of eight. And remember, there's a total of 13 cards in every suit. So 13 minus eight means there are five missing. Now, this is what we're going to talk about shape, the shape of the suit. So we, are, we have four and four. So the other five could split either three, two, four, one, or five, zero. If they happen to split three, two, as we can see that they do here, we've got the diamond suit all locked up because when we cash our honors, first round, everyone follows, second round, and then the third round, now we've captured all of the diamonds and the last ones left are high, even though they're small spot cards. So it's really important to start thinking about the shape of the suit because that can help you think how many tricks you're likely to win in that suit. So here, we're asked to win all five tricks. So again, we have eight cards, north plus south, five and three. And we have the top three. So if the suit splits three, two, which it will two thirds of the time, that's easy to remember, right? Three, two, two thirds of the time, then we're in good shape. So we start with a small one because honors from the short side first. And then we bridge back down to south. Okay, Tom is asking why north is dummy and that's how you know the composition. We're not really getting into the idea of, of dummy and declarer yet. Once we start learning about the bidding and securing the contract, then one person who has been determined to win the contract is called the declarer and declarer's partner is called the dummy. And dummy's cards are always played face up and declarer plays for both of them. In these examples, because we're just learning and we're starting from the ground up, we can see all four cards in all four, all the cards in all four hands. And we're playing for both North and South together. So North isn't technically necessarily the dummy, but we're playing as if we're declarer and we're playing with North and South. Okay, so now South won this trick with the Queen of Spades. And we have the last two spades. So these are winners. Oh, look at this one. Okay, we have to win six tricks. And again, think about the shape. We have, yes, Kathy, North and South are partners. So between North and South, we have eight cards in the diamond suit and they're split six, two. Same thing, we're missing five, we have the top three. If they split three, two, we can take all the diamonds. And here we can see that they split three, two. Honors from the short side first. Yep, very good, Kevin, you start with the two of diamonds. Now we can come back and win the king. And all these other diamonds are are good to we'll just cash our winners here and that's how you get six tricks now let's make things a little bit difficult so here we have to win four tricks How many winners can you count right off the top?
You guys are smart. Yes, three. The Ace of Hearts and the Ace King of Spades. So where are we going to get a fourth trick? Well, I'll give you a hint. The, the easiest and most obvious way to win a trick is with high cards, but you can also win with length. And since spades is our longest suit, again, we have eight, four and four. There are five missing. And if they split three, two, then once the third one is out, our fourth spade will be good. So yes, Kevin suggests that we lose one. We have to lose a spade. I don't know in this case if it really if it really matters whether we lose the that trick early or late. But let's start by cashing the ace and king. And now before we, we cash in on that ace of hearts, intentionally lose a spade to east. Now east has only hearts left. They have to play a heart back, which will win with the ace. And our last spade is good. Isn't that neat? I told you this was a fun game. So here, again, we have to win four tricks. And mm, I only see the ace, king of diamonds as the two top cards. Can you see some other winners? Yes, Archie and Iris have seen the 10 of clubs is a winner. And once again, we have four diamonds. So let's see, we have four and three, we have seven. So there are six missing. And if they split three, three, our fourth diamond will set up. Now, in actual fact, if you, if you, know all the probabilities and the statistics. When you are missing six cards, the chances of them splitting three, three are only about one third. So the odds aren't great, but that's our only hope. And one mantra in bridge is, if the cards have to lie a certain way in order for you to make your contract, you have to play as if they lie that way. So we're starting from South because that's the one that's highlighted. And we can win the first two diamonds with the ace and the king. And then give up a diamond to the queen. And West only has clubs left, so they have to play a club and our 10 will win. And now our fourth diamond has set up. Okay, are there questions about this, what we've done so far? Then let's play with a full deck. I'm gonna share a different screen here. Let's see if this works. Okay, can you all see this? So now we can see like here it's laid out that south, that's me, Marla, is at the bottom and my robot partner in the north is labeled as the dummy. 
So I'm what they call the declarer. And my partner is the dummy. That is not an insult to partner at all. I don't know why they call it the dummy. But dummy puts their cards face up after the opening lead. And as declarer, you play both of them. So in the top left corner here, it says the contract is one no Trump. No Trump means there is no Trump suit. We'll get to Trump suits later also. In terms of the contract and how many tricks you have to take, there are 13 cards. If you divide that in half, you get six and a half. So the first six tricks are referred to as book and they don't count. It's every trick above six. So one no trump means one trick above six, you have to win seven tricks. So just think about when, when the contract is specified with a number and a strain, one no trump, three spades, et cetera, it's the number plus six, that's how many tricks you have to take. So one no trump, we have to take seven tricks. Does anyone see seven tricks we can take right off the top? Well, okay, some people are thinking. Yeah, we've got the four club honors and three extra aces. So, we'll win the first trick. And here, because the suit is split evenly, four and four, we don't have to worry about honors from the short side or, or blocking. So we can just cash our club winners and they will have to discard. And we get our two aces here, and that's kind of it. That's all we're going to get here. Okay, let's try this one. So now the contract is three no trump. We have to take nine tricks. Well, what do we see as our top winners right that we can cash right now? In spades, how many can we cash right now? Two, the ace and the king. What about in hearts? Yep, three, the ace, king, and queen. How many clubs can we cash immediately? Zero. And how many diamonds? Zero. So, okay, two spades and three hearts, that's five. We need four more tricks. Where can we get four more tricks? This comes to a concept called establishment. So look carefully at the diamond suit. We have king, queen, jack, 10. All that's missing is the ace. If we force out the ace, the other three diamonds will be winners. 
So I think that's a project. Now they've also, they've led a club. So let's look at the club suit. We have the queen, the jack, and the 10. So once the ace and the king are gone, one of those will be a winner. So then we would have two spades, three hearts is five, three diamonds is eight, and a club. So, yes, Iris, I'm talking about both North and South's hand because you, you have use of both of them to win your, your tricks. So the combination of North and South together will win nine tricks. Okay, well, we have to follow suit. Okay, and they'll win the king. And they'll play a second club. Okay, so they took their two club tricks. And uh, well, then they're gonna take their ace also, ace of diamonds. But now, if you've noticed, the jack and the 10 of clubs are good. And the jack, king, queen, 10 of diamonds are all good. So we can cash the jack. Now, what are we gonna get rid of? What are we going to discard? I'm thinking the three of hearts is not gonna be terribly useful. And we might as well cash the 10 of clubs, which is also good. Any thoughts on what to discard? Yeah, I think I'm going to vote for a heart. As I said, there is there is more science to knowing what to discard, but we can worry about that later. Okay. Let's take the diamonds. So now we have other, as we call, entries to our hand with the two aces. But just by virtue of good technique, I'm going to overtake the jack with the king because I have the 10. The 10 and the jack are like the same. So we can cash the queen of diamonds. And we have to make a discard. Now here we might want to be careful. So look at the hearts. We have king, queen, 10 here and, and the ace and the five down here. So if we get rid of a heart we're actually going to get rid of one of our winners. Do you see that? Because if we if we get rid of the 10 of hearts, then the ace and the king are like superfluous to each other. So I'm going to pitch a spade here. And as we noted, the 10 of diamonds is also good. And I think I'm going to get rid of another spade. At this point, I think I'm going to work on the hearts. Honors from the short side first, right? We have ace little and three in the dummy. So now we come back up here. And we have to discard, but we're not getting rid of the ace. So we'll get rid of one of the small spades. And now we have two winners left. So we can cash the king of spades, making sure to throw the smaller one. And the jack up to the ace. And we actually took 10 tricks and we only needed nine. So that extra trick is called an over trick. And those can be important later. Okay. Let 
Now here's an interesting one. So the contract is one, no Trump. Which means we have to take seven tricks. Well, I see lots of winners here. I mean, how many heart winners do we have? I see six heart winners. Plus the ace of clubs and the ace king of diamonds. No problem, right? But they led the ace of spades. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hmm. Well, I don't think these small clubs are going to be much use to us as long as we save the ace. More? Stop with the spades already. I guess I'll throw away a diamond. And another one. Well, now I have to start getting rid of some of my winners. This isn't so good. <sighs> Well, okay, shoo. And now I guess, I guess it doesn't really matter. We have the rest of the tricks because we have the top two diamonds here. And we've got all these good hearts. But we only took six tricks and we needed to take seven. Because now you can look, you can see the whole layout. Look at all of their spades. Once they led a spade and they just ran all the spades, we had no hope. Because we didn't have any spades with which to stop them. Don't you wish you could stop them if they have a long suit like that? There is a way to stop them. It's called the Trump suit. What is the Trump suit? Well, when a suit is designated as Trump, then if you are out of the suit that's being played, you can trump their ace. If you play a, a, a card in the Trump suit, that will win the trick. So let's just show you an example, a quick example of this. Okay, so now we're going to say that hearts is Trump. We still have to take seven tricks because the contract is one heart. And 
And they'll start with their... Oh, now they've switched to a club. Well, I'll just show you what happens if they try to continue with the spades, which now they're not going to, of course, because they know what's happening. But if they play more spades, we can trump them with the hearts. So now we have, now we can cash all of our good hearts, especially because they're Trump. And we'll definitely get our seven tricks. Now they have to discard. Sucks to be you guys. But they'll get the last two tricks, I think. But here we took nine tricks, even more than the required seven. Okay, so do we have any questions? Does the basic premise of the game make sense? It gets a lot more complicated than that, but that's the basic premise. And there are lots more ways and lots more strategies for taking tricks. And the Trump suit is great, but that also can present new problems. And we're gonna have to cover all of that too. Okay, Peggy's question is, what was establishment? That's when you, when you want to establish winners in a suit, but you don't have all the high cards. So in the example that we had with the diamonds, you had the king, queen, jack, and 10, but not the ace. So right off the top, none of those cards was a winner because the ace was still out. But once you force out the ace, then you have established your winners in the suit because you have all the remaining high cards. Are there other questions? I hope that means that it made sense in the beginning. Bridge can be complicated, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, well, I think that's that's enough to start with. I'll come back next week and we'll talk more about other ways of taking tricks and other ways you can use the Trump suit. I am so impressed. Already have them playing through whole hands and seeing the difference when you play the same hand without a Trump suit and with a Trump suit, what a difference that makes. This is tricky stuff. It is, Bridge is hard. But that's what makes it worthwhile. It's it's really it's a lot of fun. And yeah, that's that the other thing I want to I wanted to remind all of you. Like, so this is a card game. It's supposed to be fun. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> right. And it has kind of a steep learning curve. And and so it's easy to get frustrated. And just just embrace it and keep going. Like you're gonna make mistakes. Right. You're not always gonna see the right way to play it and right. don't forget something. I still make a lot of mistakes and sometimes I don't see it until the end. 
and I forget, oh yeah, I learned that convention and I forgot it. So it's totally fine. The best thing about bridge is that no matter how badly you think you've messed up, in seven minutes, you're going to have 13 new cards and a shot at redemption. So That's right. <laughs> Every hand is a shot at redemption. Um, yeah, if, if, if uh, your, your brain is a little bit tired, if your head is spinning, don't worry. Uh, it's supposed to be right at the beginning. Um, this lesson will be available for you to watch again. You can pause it. You can go through slowly. Uh, we'll also leave a place where you can leave questions about this lesson. Um, and yeah, just want to thank, especially folks who could join us live, but everyone who's watching this, thank you guys for joining us for these. Um, if you have friends, Bridge is great when it's just you. Bridge is even better with friends. If you have friends who Definitely. you think might be interested, please invite them to join the class. We're still right at the beginning and they could watch this uh, recording, this replay right away. Um, Marla, thank you. That was just a joy. I, I I felt like I got to sort of transport myself right back to the beginning. And um, sometimes, you know, it's great to start at the beginning and remember. Oh, right, that's how the game works. It's tricky. Yeah, thank stuff. you so much, and thank all of you for being here and and giving me the opportunity to to teach this wonderful game to you. What a fantastic class! I'm so impressed with how friendly uh, and brave this uh, class has been from the very start. So yes. uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone same time, same place next week. Keep an eye on your inbox. I'll email everyone who registered for the class again before next week's lesson with a link so that you can rewatch this one and to make sure you know how to come back for next week's lesson. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so I much, look forward Marla. to seeing you next week. Bye, everyone. Good job. Congrats on the beginning of your journey. Yes.